Cinematography and color grading should work together to bring the visual world of cinema to life. The story is key for any filmmaker to focus on, but to achieve the highest quality in cinema, you must also improve all aspects of what the audience sees on the big screen. In today's video, I'll focus on the color grading side of your workflow, and more specifically, how to master getting your skin tones right every time in editing. Hi, my name is Dylan Batista. I'm a cinematographer and filmmaker based in New York City who also enjoys the process of color grading. I always work to make my cinematography stand out to reach that film quality, and how I edit my work matters just as much as how I capture it. You should pay as much attention to the details in your grades as you do when you film, and if your skin tones don't look right in the final image, everything looks off no matter how well you shoot your shots. Before we even begin color grading, you want a good white balance when filming to ensure the right skin tones in your final grade. You should avoid using auto white balance when filming and learn how to use different color temperatures depending on your location and lighting scenario to get proper colors for your subject in the frame. Auto white balance can also cause color shifts between your shots in the same scene, making it more difficult to match your colors from shot to shot. If you properly balance your image before filming, it makes achieving great skin tones easy and you can avoid doing additional work in your grading. But sometimes we make mistakes when we're filming and don't realize it until we go to edit. Or we get sent footage that isn't balanced properly, and there's nothing we can do about that if we weren't the ones filming. So now let me show you how I would fix my skin tones and get them perfect every time in DaVinci Resolve. There is one tool in DaVinci Resolve that has now forever changed the way we can correct our skin tones. I'll show you three different places where you can correct your skin in your grades, using two shots from some of my previous work. With the first shot here, I'll quickly run down how I went through grading it and where I would adjust my skin tones so they come out the way we want in the final grade. So here is the final grade and node structure I used for this shot. Disabling everything, I started in node 2 with my favorite phantom LUT to get a good base for my process. In the first node, I made my primary adjustments, adding contrast and using the wheels to open up the image. I adjusted the white balance a bit and lowered the shadows and highlights. In the next node, I created a film curve and here in the fourth node is the first place I would go to adjust my skin tones. Usually when I grade, I always have my parade scopes open to see if I'm losing any details in my shots. But when I go to adjust my skin tones, I change it to the vector scope and make sure that 1. The skin tone indicator is showing. This helps you make sure the color of your skin is where it needs to be to look right. No matter how dark or light you are, our skin belongs on the same line. And 2. I turn on the display qualifier focus and the qualifier here. So when I hover over my skin, I can see on the vector scope if it falls along the line so I know I'm already accurate. Now if you want a better look at your skin tones and improve them even more, you should use the color slice tool. This breaks up the image into all of these colors so you can dial them exactly how you want them to be. You can click on the highlight of each section to see what it affects. But as you can see next to the red, they also have a skin section so when I click on the highlight button, it shows the skin tones that will be affected in the selection. I can press shift and H to keep the highlight on so make sure you have the keyboard shortcut enabled here. With the center slider here, I can refine the skin selection so it affects all of the evenly exposed skin in the image. And now with the hue slider, you can fix the color of your skin so if you feel like it's a little too red, you can shift it to the left, and if it's a little too greenish yellow, you shift it to the right. Looking at the skin line on the vector scope, we can move it just a bit towards the red to make sure it's really on that line. And it really is that simple to do. If you want to, you can increase the density of the skin to boost it a bit and bring it out more, but it really is a personal preference. Mess around with these options in the color slice tool, but remember not to go overboard with the shifting so your image doesn't fall apart. That's one place where you could adjust your skin, if not, I would move on with the next node where I do my color grading. In the following node, I boost the image with another custom curve, and in the node after, there is another place where you can adjust your skin tones. Sometimes I like to grade my image first, adjusting the overall look I want for the final image, and if my skin tones look off after the grade and boost, you can do the same method I previously showed you, but put it in this placement. Make sure you have your vector scope and skin tone line on, display the qualifier focus and turn on the qualifier, and make your adjustments using the color slice tool. You can see my skin falls along the line, but I could further perfect it by making the same adjustment as the first one, shifting the hue towards the red just a little. I go to finish my grading by using the Dehancer plugin and Glow for finishing touches. And my skin, along with the rest of the grade, comes out great. With this next shot, I'll show you what I sometimes use instead of the color slice tool, but I would recommend if you're more of a beginner to stick with the color slice method. In this clip, I graded it just like the last shot. I start in the second node with the phantom LUT, then going back to the first for the primary adjustments. 
In the third node, I make my custom film curve, and the fourth node is where I make small adjustments to the color and my skin to start. Here, I use the normal hue versus saturation to decrease the reds from my skin, and I use the hue versus luminance to brighten the reds a bit to make my skin look more natural. Since I've been doing this for a while now, I can tell if it looks good or not without needing the vector scope, but if you're a beginner, use all the resources available to you. The skin tones might not look perfect straight away, but I know with the rest of the grade, it could balance out and I can make fewer adjustments in the end. I grade in the next node and boost the image again in the following node. I add a dehancer, which will change up my shot to give it more film qualities and finish the grade with glow. Here at the very end, I can double check my skin tones with the color slice tool. I make sure my vector scopes are showing with the skin tone line. I turn on the highlights for the skin and shift the center over. With the qualifier, I can see that my skin falls close to the skin tone line. I can move the hue a bit to the left to perfect it even more. And why not add a bit of density to the color? And that's all I had to do to adjust my skin tones. With the color slice tool, perfecting your skin tones and getting great results every time is really that simple. But if you're filming, make sure your white balance is set properly so you don't have to put in as much work when you're grading. If you want a full breakdown of my color grading process and more tips to improve your work, let me know by leaving a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.